What's the dumbest reason someone refused to believe you? I once told festival organizers that their main stage was about to collapse, and they thought I was trying to sabotage the event. My name's David Chen, I'm 29 and I'm a newly graduated, structural engineer from MIT, specializing in temporary structures and load analysis. One of my professors always said, when you see a structural failure coming, you've got minutes, not hours. Last weekend, I was at the Echo Wave Festival in Arizona, three days, 80,000 people. I was there with friends trying to relax after finishing my master's degree. The main stage was a massive scaffolding structure, about 60 feet tall with giant LED screens and speakers. About two hours into the first day, I noticed something was wrong. I was maybe 100 feet from the stage when I saw it. The left support tower was swaying, not from wind, but from actual structural shift. I got closer and saw the problem. Several connection bolts at the base of the left tower were completely sheared off. That side's weight was being held by maybe half the supports it was designed for. With the base vibrations and 15,000 people pressing against the barriers, it was a disaster waiting to happen. I pushed through the crowd until I found a security guard in a yellow vest with a radio. Excuse me, I need to speak to someone about the stage structure. There's a serious safety issue. He looked at me like I was drunk. What kind of safety issue? The left support tower has broken bolts. The stage could collapse. You? Part of the crew? No, I'm a structural engineer. I can see the failure points. This is a life-threatening hazard. He radioed it in. Control? I've got someone here saying there's a problem with the stage. A voice replied, What kind of problem? Says the stage could collapse. Says he's an engineer. Send him to production. He pointed. Me towards some trailers behind the stage. I ran over and found a stressed-looking woman with a clipboard named Karen. She barely glanced up. You with the engineering team? No, I'm a structural engineer. The left tower has broken bolts. The stage is going to collapse. Now she looked at me. Excuse me? The bolts at the base are broken. You need to evacuate immediately. Karen. Called over Mike, the site manager, who sized me up. And you are? David Chen, structural engineer, MIT. Your stage has critical damage that could cause a catastrophic failure. Mike crossed his arms. MIT, huh? So what are you, 23? 29. And I know exactly what I'm looking at. Those connections are failing. You have any idea how much money we've put into this festival? Sponsors, 80,000 tickets sold. If that stage collapses, people are going to die. Karen shook her head. Our engineers approved this. We have permits. Permits don't account for post-installation failures. This is new damage. Mike's tone got sharp. Let me guess, protester trying to shut us down? No. I'm trying to save lives. And if we cancel and nothing happens, who's paying for the losses? If you don't and it collapses, who's paying for the lawsuits? Karen pulled him aside and whispered something. Mike came back. We're not shutting down based on the word of some random guy. I can show credentials. I can point out exactly which bolts are failing. You think we're going to panic because of a theory from a grad student? It's not a theory. I'm watching the failure happen. Mike's radio crackled. Mike, we need you for sound check. He replied, on my way, then turned back to me. Sir, if you keep causing trouble, security will remove you. I walked back toward the crowd defeated, but kept my eyes on the tower. 15 minutes later, during the second song of the opening act, I heard a loud crack over the music. The left side of the stage dropped about six inches. The crowd screamed. The music cut off. A voice over the PA said, we're experiencing technical difficulties. Please step back. Security started pushing people away from the barricades. I saw Mike and Karen running, faces pale, radios pressed to their mouths. The bot stage didn't fully collapse, but the left tower leaned at a dangerous angle. If the show had continued, it would have come down. The festival shut down for the day while emergency crews stabilized the structure. I overheard an engineer telling a reporter, multiple connection failures in the primary system. If this had happened during a full performance, dozens could have been killed. Mike and Karen were nowhere in sight. Later, the festival quietly settled lawsuits from people injured in the evacuation. I kept my wristband as a reminder. Sometimes being right isn't enough if people don't want to listen.